The Grand Power K100, let's check it out. The Grand Power K100, a 9mm double single action pistol with a polymer grip frame. Uh, there are a lot of cool features about this pistol that differ from a lot of what you're seeing nowadays. These are made in Slovakia and since 2002, uh, they were imported into the U.S. in 2007 with STI. Uh, it was actually called the GP6. Uh, since that time, Eagle Imports is the main importer of these pistols. And uh, there's a lot of really cool features. In fact, we're going to go ahead and take the magazine and make sure the gun is unloaded. Uh, one of the big things about this pistol uh, is that it has a locking block system, the lockup. And it has a helical cut in the barrel, so it actually rotates instead of the original browning design, which actually tilts the barrel. Uh, and that's going to really help with accuracy because it's going to keep the barrel level, but it's also going to help with felt recoil. These are really soft shooting guns. It is a double single action pistol, and that means that when you pull the trigger, uh, it does actuate the hammer for that first shot. Uh, and then, of course, the subsequent shots are in single action. Uh, and just one of the things about this pistol that I want to talk about right up front is the smooth trigger pull, uh, even in double action. It is a really smooth, consistent trigger pull. I was getting about nine and a half pounds on the double action, and with the single action, a little take up, and then a nice crisp snap around three pounds, 14, 15 ounces. I was getting that pretty consistently. Reset is unbelievably quick. I mean, that reset is right there. Uh, and uh, these guns were really designed for the competitive market uh, in Europe. I mean, there's a big competitive market. There's a lot of models that Grand Power makes, and uh, this is just one of their standard 9mm full-size pistols. Last year, I did a review on this P11, which is their compact model, and just really enjoyed shooting this pistol. Uh, in fact, I shot about 300 rounds at the range. After the review, I took it back down and shot it some more. I just really loved shooting it. Uh, and again, that has a lot to do, again, with the same kind of cam blocking action, which we're going to look at that, obviously, when we uh, break the pistol down. It actually turns, but it makes it really slick. And just like the smaller brother, the big brother here is the slide on it is just so smooth. I mean, it's, it just feels like quality. I mean, I don't really know how to explain it. And that really translates when you're shooting it. Uh, it just has a really gliding effect when you're firing this pistol. shoots good what do you think I mean that's different it shoots really good it just it points very naturally very natural the way the recoil pulse is to me is different recoil is very smooth if you look at the barrel notice how the barrel rotates as you're cycling the slide it's very similar to the Beretta PX4 Storm and I've always said the PX4 Storm is the nicest shooting ugly gun I've ever shot and this, uh, this Grand Power right here, it's got the same type barrel system with a rotating lug, but it's actually a good looking gun. It's very nice to shoot. Low recoil, very manageable. You know, we've got a piece of steel out here at about 40 yards and I uh, was just ringing it over and over and over again without really even trying. So it's a nice pistol. I really like the way that it shoots. Now when it comes to accuracy, we were shooting at 40 yards at this steel plate and hitting it very consistently.
honestly, it, it's such a smooth glide on here. I don't know, it's, it's really funny, but it, the way the gun, I guess that you can tell the slide, it's low and it just seems to be easy to shoot. Uh, it has a tenifer finish on it, so it makes it really nice, corrosion resistant. It's going to, you know, keep it looking good longer. Uh, you see that it has serrations both on the front and the back, uh, and it makes it really easy to cock this pistol. The frame itself is a polymer frame, but it's mainly the grip. And we're going to look at this when we break it down, but there is isn't a steel insert in this pistol to give it rigidity, and that has a lot to do with the exceptional trigger. Of course, you see the commander hammer. Uh, one of the things that's really neat about it is the grip safety right here. Uh, it, you can carry it cocked and locked. Uh, but what's another th cool feature is that you can actually pull the slide back with the safety engaged. And then you can bring it down. Uh, just looking at the safety reminds me that these are made also in full automatic. And uh, they really handle well. I mean, they have, they're very flat shooting in the full auto version. Of course, we can't get those here in the U.S. Now, it is ambidextrous, the safety. Also, your mag release is ambidextrous as well. Uh, and then your slide stop. Right here, you have your slide stop and on the other side. So it is a fully ambidextrous pistol. Uh, they do offer a decocking uh, lever that you can get from Grand Power separately. The magazines are 15 rounds and uh, steel. They look, they're not marked Metgar, but I can bet you $100 these are Metgar magazines. Very smooth, very slick. Metgar makes magazines for uh, the majority of firearm companies, uh, especially imported guns made in Italy. Very slick. Now, one of the things you're going to notice about this, it, it locks up really nice, but there is a lot of room in that mag well to get this magazine in, inserted. And it's beveled, of course, at the top, so it makes it really fast to be able to change these mags out. You do get two mags with the gun. The magazines are really close to the CZ-75 magazines, but they are not the same. Um, for one thing, it has a little notch right here that your CZ doesn't have. But I even inserted these into a CZ-75, and they just don't fit the same. They're pretty close, uh, but you can tell that they're not going to work. These have been modified somewhat to fit for the Grand Power. But they do fit in the P11 Compact. The grip is extremely ergonomic. Uh, kind of similar to the CZ design with the, the beaver tail area coming up and a little bit of a hump here. But it just fits the hand very well. Serrations right on the front strap. Here on the back, it's a textured... Uh, just texturing here and here and then smoothness coming up the way this gun you can kind of see it just has some contours to it that allow you to really get a good feel on this gun I mean it just really molds into the hand very well uh, what's really cool though is there are four different back strap options I have the small on this one uh, it does have one that's a little bit wider but still the same width and then one a little larger that comes out and then the largest which actually rides right up right in this area uh, so it really gives you a, an ability to customize this to your hand. And to change them out, it's really easy. Now, I've seen guys just pull them out. They're pressure fit in here, but I've taken a bullet and just kind of popped it a little bit, and then it pops right out, and you can put whatever grip you want to. And I'm going to go ahead and put the large on here. You'll notice these little grooves right here, and it kind of locks into those grooves. And there you go. You're all done. Now you'll notice this little area right here with the grip off, and that gives you a place for lanyard, but it's held uh, under the grip. So it's really not obtrusive, and it's not going to get in your way. It has the 1913 Picatinny rail here that you can put any of your different accessories on it. Uh, the trigger guard is squared off with serrations. All the edges have been beveled. It's been dehorned, so it's really smooth uh, from the back and the front. All the sides are. It's a really slick feeling gun, and the action is super slick as well. The sights, uh, you have a protected hood right here on the rear sight. It is steel, and then the front sight is polymer. It does come with two front sight inserts. One says plus one, one says minus one. And that gives you different sight options for that front sight. As you can see, it has a little groove underneath, and that corresponds with the roll pin right here. The barrel comes in at four and a quarter inches. 
Comes in a nice hard plastic box, closed foam padding, uh, really good thorough instruction manual, a nylon brush, of course the sights, extra magazine, and again your extra back straps. Disassembly is a little different with your K100. Uh, with the Mark 7, you actually pull down the trigger guard. Uh, with the Mark 12, which is the better version, uh, there are two little tabs right here, similar to the way the Glock works. And so we're going to go ahead and check, make sure the gun is unloaded. First thing we're going to do is, is pull down on the tabs, and then pull the slide back, and then up, and then it releases. Go ahead and pull your barrel out. Stainless steel barrel, and you can see the helical design right here that actually turns this barrel and then it locks up with this little groove right here into the slide. Uh, this is a really beautiful well polished barrel. It does have a bevel somewhat where it does kind of bevel out uh, toward the end of the barrel and this gives you even better lockup. The guide rod is captivated and we have a flat recoil spring which helps with felt recoil. And here we can see the insert that goes into the pistol. Again this is a polymer grip but it locks into the frame right here that's all metal. And this is extremely well done. I, I'm, I'm just gonna tell you one thing about the finish on these. Um, it's very reminiscent of your older pistols that were just extremely well finished. That's what it reminds me of. Kind of old school, but really high quality. And here the pistol is fully filled stripped. Now to reassemble, there's a little trick to it. Of course, first put your recoil spring over your guide rod. Take your barrel, go ahead and put it into place. Do not have it locked up like it would be all the way back. Now these rails and this little part back here have to go into this area. The front goes into this area and the rear goes in these little channels. Get the guide rod and recoil spring into place. Making sure that barrel stays into position and it doesn't slide back. Go ahead and grab these tabs, pull them down. Pull the slide all the way back and then down into position and it'll lock right in. It's fairly difficult to do in front of the camera. Once you get the hang of it, it works well. Now the K100 is not one of the cheap imports that are coming into the country right now. This is more of a finely crafted pistol made typically for competitive shooting, military police. Uh, with the standard K100, this is an excellent range gun, self-defense gun, home defense, uh, just an excellent sidearm. And if you're looking for something more for concealed carry, I think the P11 is an excellent choice as well. Uh, so check out the K100, and you can find this at Eagle Imports. In fact, I'll have all the links down below. Uh, the price on this pistol, from what I've seen, as far as street price, they're coming in around the $499, right at $500 mark. I did find one on GunBroker for $468, uh, and that was the cheapest price, price I found. Uh, but these are excellent quality pistols uh, with the steel insert, with the real highly crafted barrel and the slide system. Uh, I think this is just a really exceptional pistol for the money. The Grand Power K100 9mm, thumbs way up. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Last year I did a review on their P1 and uh, this is a really beautiful, that's a P11, Grand Power. We're going to talk shop, we're going to get on. <laughs> you buy this pistol, you're going to love it. Oh yeah. <laughs>